friends. It is a Monday morning and for the whole day today, I'm going to be filming a video that's been on my to-do list for a very long time. The topic of this video is pretty much the basis for my entire channel and that is how to travel even though you work full time. To give some context, I got my first big girl job at a bank coming right out of university. And at that time I was only getting 10 paid time off days per year. So I made the most out of that by going on weekend trips and planning my travels around the holidays. And then eventually after a couple of years, I got promoted and my pay time off doubled. So I actually got four weeks per year of pay time off and I traveled everywhere. Now that I'm in New York City, I am blessed enough to work for a company that actually has an open paid time off policy. And what that pretty much means is that I can take off time whenever I'd like to without any restrictions, as long as it's not super excessive and as long as I'm doing my job. So having been through the whole spectrum of pay time off limits, I can confidently say that it is absolutely possible if you want to travel a lot, even though you work a full-time job, as a travel addict who works a hybrid remote nine to five job and who goes to more than six countries a year, I have some valuable advice on how to do so. So my first tip would be to plan your vacations around the weekends and holidays. There are around seven to 10 national holidays per year, depending on how many your company recognizes. So if you have a set amount of time off per year and you wanna make the most out of each day that you take off, then plan your trips around the holidays. For example, if you wanna plan a four day trip to Mexico and you plan on doing that around Labor Day weekend, then all you need to do is take one day off work and then you have the weekend and Labor Day, which is typically a Monday. So from Friday to Monday, you have a four day trip to Mexico and all you had to do was take off one day. Say for example, you wanna do a longer international trip and you also plan that around Labor Day, then all you need to do is have off Friday through the next Sunday and only take off Tuesday through Friday, which is four days. That means you get a nine day trip abroad by only taking four days off work. This is actually how I used to travel when I only had 10 paid time off days a year and I'd actually get to go up to four countries a year by doing it this way. Now back to work. Um, because it's towards the end of a quarter for me right now at work, I don't really have too much to do. I do have a few calls today, but other than that, it's going to be a fairly slow week for me, which I'm excited about because it's been a really busy quarter. So cheers to Mondays. Done with all my calls for the day and it's about 2 p.m. now I'm gonna have my late lunch I have a rice bowl here um, so I usually mix in some sriracha mayo and some furikake uh, flakes which are seaweed flakes and then I added two fried eggs and some kimchi mm. okay it is not every video that you get to see natural lighting because usually it doesn't exist in this apartment so my second tip is to be flexible about the dates and the destination that you're traveling to flights are often cheaper when you fly out on a tuesday or wednesday and when you come back on a monday or tuesday and if you can try traveling off peak because not only are there going to be more accommodation options and less crowds but it also will just make your trip a lot more enjoyable in general i remember surprising my boyfriend andrew with a trip to banff canada back in 2017 for his birthday and when i was researching banff online i saw turquoise blue lakes like just lushness everywhere green pine trees and that was the image i had for this trip 
until I realized after I booked everything that the snow doesn't even melt until June or July. So what I thought was going to be like a spring summer getaway ended up being more of like a winter wonderland. And it was so amazing, breathtaking, actually very romantic. We went snowshoeing across the canyon. We went ice skating on the frozen lake and that was actually my first time ice skating ever and we cozied up in a really nice warm cabin with a rooftop hot tub so it ended up being amazing and there were not that many people as well which just made the trip overall so much better to this day it's still been one of my favorite trips ever and also be flexible about the destination that you're going to too so if you have your eyes set on going to costa rica the bahamas or paris and those are the only places you want to go well i would definitely recommend you be a little bit more open-minded because the world is really your playground don't just limit yourself to going to those places that are on your list something that i actually love doing in my spare time is going on google flights and just typing in a continent for the destination so whether it be asia europe i don't even specify a country and i go put in the dates that i want to travel during and it'll give me the cheapest countries that i can fly to and uh usually i'll end up going to those countries and completely enjoying myself even though it may not have been a place that i would ever have thought of this is the way that i find the best flight deals and end up loving that surprise destination you need to keep your mind open in order to get the most out of traveling when you work a nine to five the more you limit yourself the harder it is to travel or even find it worthwhile to travel Here's a little Pika cameo. He's sitting on this rug pad because we had to wash the area rug this morning because somebody decided to pee on it last night. Yeah, someone over here. So I just got back from Target after getting a few essentials like hand soap, baby wipes, Q-tips, stuff like that. Anyways, now I want to give the third piece of advice, which is take red eye flights. I love red eye flights. If I can take one to get somewhere, I definitely will. When you have limited time off. When you have limited time off, it really helps to just take a flight right after you get off work and then you'll be at your destination in the morning without you actually having to take any time off work for the actual transit. I've done this so many times and it actually works out because after work I'm usually pretty tired and I fall asleep somewhat easily on the plane. You save time and then you can be somewhat energized in the morning when you get to your destination after getting some sleep. Although I'm realizing that I'm getting less and less sleep now that I'm older on the flight. Like I just can't fall asleep sometimes. Maybe it has to do with the age. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. But all I know is that if there are red eye flights, I am definitely taking it. Knowing that I love these kinds of flights, I usually always have some on-flight essentials that I bring with me on every trip. I know it's not always easy to be able to sleep on the plane, but these essentials have helped me. So if you guys want a video on that, let me know. I am definitely happy to share them. It is around 6.30 p.m. now. I already got off work, did a little workout, and then took a shower. And I'm meeting my brother in Jersey City, which is where he lives, because he's going to treat me to a little birthday dinner. Uh, my birthday is in two days on the 22nd, but we're doing it a little bit early, and he hasn't told me where he's taking me yet. It's going to be a surprise, so I'm really excited. Me and my brother are both big foodies, so I highly trust anything that he recommends. I don't think he'll disappoint me. So before I head out and take the train over to see my brother, I wanted to go ahead and give advice number four. Now this one might be a little bit controversial, but it's always worked for me and I still do it to this day. And that is to call in sick. So at my last job, I was allowed 10 sick days a year. And did I use all of them? Absolutely. And was I sick every single time? No. Sick days are, I believe, almost always paid and work the same way that paid time off does. You're granted to use them for the year and usually if you don't use them by the end of the year, they disappear and you're not allowed to use them for the next year. So why not use them as mental wellness days? Because that usually counts as a sick day and wellness can mean travel, right? 
Don't be afraid to take your sick days even if you're not sick. You literally get paid to use them and you are entitled to them. Just make sure that you don't post anything on social media about you bungee jumping off a cliff in Norway when you said that you had the flu, just in case. Just decided to switch out my earrings. I got these recently. They're so cute, like these acrylic squiggles. Add a little fun character to my outfit, which is a boring little gray sweater. All right, let's go. We made it. We are in Jersey City. Wow, the air actually smells fresher here. I smell pine and the woods. But You can see a smidge of the skyline over there. Wow. Oh my gosh. Whoa, look at the sunset right now. It's so pretty. Ooh. You know. dinner that place was amazing love the ambiance I had a really good time talking to my brother and his girlfriend and we had a few lovely drinks so definitely had myself a good time we are now back in Manhattan and we're walking back to our apartment and this is the perfect time for me to introduce advice number five which is if you are remote or hybrid remote for work work at the destination i'm lucky enough to have been fully remote for a year and a half during covid and as of january 2023 i've been hybrid remote and i honestly do believe that the remote work setting has been one of the best things to come out of this pandemic it's allowed me to go to places like canada and colombia for over a week each and i only had to take off two days each and use a holiday and every morning i was able to go to a new cafe to work i was able to take midday walks around the neighborhood that i was in and i was also able to just get off work and explore different restaurants and bars you just get so much more out of your trip and you get an actual chance to talk to locals on a day-to-day -day basis all the time that you take exploring the destination before and after work it means that you don't need to take full days off to travel somewhere Don't mind the bed, we got him a new bed. The zipper broke off, so that's why the um, inside cushion is peeking through. <laughs> Look at my little walrus. He's so cute. So it's 11.40 p.m. now. I have changed into my comfy PJs here and whew, it's been quite a day. Dinner was a lot longer than I expected, but it was really good. And now I want to go over advice number six, and that is to change your mindset around what travel actually means. So what I mean is travel can be a day trip or 48 hours in a new city. It can be anything that you want it to be because the world is huge. I think that a lot of people can be really intimidated when they hear of the word travel. They think that they have to plan some grand vacation and that there's so many components involved, such as booking the hotel, booking the flights, um, scheduling everything to the T, putting an Excel sheet together of all the activities that you're gonna do. And while that may be true for some people, it doesn't need to be that way. I think a lot of people, when they think of these things, they'd rather just not even take a vacation at all. Vacations do not have to be grand at all and they should make you excited to think about instead of being anxious or worried when you think about planning a trip. If what you like to do is camping in the woods for a weekend, then go and do it. If you like to lounge by a pool at a hotel only miles away from your home, then do it. If you like to fly to new cities and experience different concerts or live events, then go and do it. 
all of that is still considered travel and sometimes all you need to do is just change your mindset around what travel means because to this day something that i still love to do is to drive a couple of hours north of new york city up to upstate new york and stay in a cabin and just cozy up for the entire weekend and just don't do anything with andrew and my dog it's still one of my favorite things to do and i consider that traveling 100 percent I also love taking long train rides or subway rides to different cities to just eat and hang out and then come back at the end of the day. I don't think that vacations have to be a big deal. They don't have to be an all or nothing type of deal. Just make sure that you spend your weekends or days off exploring as much as you want and doing what makes you truly happy at the end of the day. All right, I'm officially tucked into bed. I am super tired. It's been a really long day. Tomorrow's a Tuesday, which means that I have to go into the office for work. But to end the night, I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys my last advice, advice number seven, and that is to make travel a priority. This last set that I have is probably the most important tip that I have whenever people ask me how the heck Julie, do you travel so much when you work full time? And honestly, the answer is very simple. And that is that I make traveling a priority. It is my biggest hobby. It is my biggest passion in life. And it's honestly my way of life. I eat it, I breathe it, I ingest it in any way that I can in my daily life. And I think about it constantly. There are always people in my life that tell me that they want to travel as much as me or that they're jealous of all the places that I've been to. But honestly, a lot of times these are people that are completely capable of doing it themselves. They just don't prioritize it enough and they'd rather spend their weekend sitting on couches or drinking at the bars. I work hard so that I can constantly plan ahead. I'm always looking for flight deals. I'm always looking for ways that I can save money. And I, I'm always looking for side hustles to do because I prioritize traveling. If you get caught in the hustle and bustle of life, it's really easy to say that you want to travel somewhere, but you actually don't end up going for like the next five years because you never actually make travel a priority. Honestly, at the end of the day, we're all busy. We all have friends and families that we have to care for but you owe it to yourself to travel and go out there to see a little slice of the world. You get to see different cultures, you get to see how people interact with each other, you get to hear different languages, and traveling can really give you so much perspective on life and how interconnected we all are as humans. So if you wanna start traveling or you have a resolution to travel more this year, then do it, I believe in you. Make it a plan to prioritize traveling this year. I promise that after your travels, you won't even know why it took you so long to do it because seeing the world is just simply life-changing. That wraps up my top tips for how to travel even if you work a nine to five job. Make sure that it doesn't consume you because the world is your playground and there is so much to see and do on your time off. I'm heading to bed now because it is way past my bedtime and I'm super tired. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other advice, please leave it below. If you just have any comments or if you just want to say hi, um, leave it below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Bye.